All right, so section 5.4 is on what's called special systems. So, and what it's really kind of illustrating is, remember that our answer is the point where the two lines cross. So most of the time, you know, we'll have some problem and we'd say, oh, okay, there's the solution and, you know, whatever that was. But we would have one solution. Okay, and, you know, you could have line, you know, this could be like y equals 1 half x plus 1 and y equals negative 2x plus 4, you know, some version of that. Um, but the thing to remember when there's one solution is the slopes are going to be different. They don't have to be one positive, one negative, just different. They could both be positive, they could both be negative doesn't matter just different slopes okay but we do have such thing as parallel lines so the lines don't cross so this would be no solution okay and so you could have you know, the equation could be, you know, x plus 2 and y equals x minus 3 or something like that. And so on this one, you know, technically the slopes are 1. Um, but on parallel lines or no solution, you're going to have the same slope but different y-intercepts so positive 2 negative 3 are the different y-intercepts but the same slope okay and then it's kind of weird but you could have one line and another line like right on top of it I'll show you what that looks like in a minute um, but then this would be, I always misspell infinitely, infinitely many solutions. And so really what would happen is it wouldn't necessarily start out like this, but you might have like y equals two-thirds x plus one and then you'd end up in the problem when you solved it you'd end up with the same line so it'll have the same slope and the same line intercept like everything will be the same okay so there's a couple um, some matching problems at the beginning of your assignment that will just say match up which you know which equations are go with which like graphs um, so I would get them in slope intercept form and then just look at the y intercepts that'll pretty much be the clue um, and then it'll say you know is there one solution no solution or infinitely many so if you see the lines cross there's one if they're parallel there's none and if it's just one line that means the equations are the same and you have infinitely many solutions Okay, so um, and then there's also a section at the end of the assignment that says, let me read the directions, use only the slope and the y-intercepts of the graphs to determine whether the system has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So they don't want you to do um, elimination or substitution or anything like that get the equations to look like I did right here 
the slope intercept form and then if they have different slopes one solution if they are the same exact line infinitely many if they have the same slope but different y-intercepts then there's no solution so you don't have to actually they're not looking for the actual answer like if it's one solution they don't want to know the actual answer they just want to know that there's one solution okay all right and then in the middle goes back to that first thing i did just look at the slopes if they're different one solution if they're the same but different uh, y-intercepts no solution if they're exactly the same infinitely many okay so <clears throat> quiz tomorrow it'll involve solving systems um, substitution elimination like you can use whatever method you want so even if the directions say solve using substitution but you want to do elimination go for it if it says elimination and you want to do substitution go for it I don't care I want you to feel the most comfortable doing them okay remember that if it says uh, what or is this point a solution that you plug it in to both equations and if they both it works on both of them then it is a solution if it doesn't work on one of them then no matter what the answer is no it's not a solution all right have a great day guys december 1st we're almost done keep working at it have a good day bye of the assignment um there are a couple problems uh, that they want you to solve and so let's see like what does it look like you, you know what it looks like if there's one solution because we've been doing those for the last handful of lessons um, so let's see if we had this problem Okay, so um, to me, so we haven't talked a ton about it, but I don't care how you solve it. If you want to do substitution, you want to do elimination, like whatever. It doesn't matter to me. It's what you're most comfortable with. But to me, on this problem, whenever I see y or x by itself, I'm going to do substitution. It usually ends up working out easier. Okay, so if I take this problem or this equation and do substitution, that means I need to get x or y by itself. So it's an easy just add or subtract, and you'll have the x or the y by itself, in this case y. Then I'm going to substitute into the other equation. And this is where, instead of y, I put 2x plus 3. This is where some people don't like substitution, and I get it. It's kind of a lot of steps, like to solve this equation. Um, but again, this is just my preference. So negative 4 and positive 4... It's zero, it's gone. And I just have six equals six. Okay, well, that's true. So when it ends up being true, the answer is infinitely many solutions. It's this, it ends up being the same line. So when you have a true statement at the end, it doesn't matter what the number is. <clears throat> Excuse me. It could be negative 4 equals negative 4, 10 equals 10, 1 half equals 1 half. It doesn't matter. As long as it's true, the answer is infinitely many solutions. Okay. All right. Um, so another one that like kind of gets... Sometimes people get confused about a problem like this. 
and it's fine. It's kind of written differently, but I do a substitution on this one also because I have y equal. I just happen to have y equal on both problems. So I'm going to substitute 2x plus 1 for the y on the bottom. And when I solve it, 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 equals negative 5. That is false. When it's false, we say no solution. Okay. So, <clears throat> again, on your first set of problems, it's just going to be a matching. Match the system with its graph. And then just state, is there one solution, no solution, or infinitely many? Then you'll do four problems where it says solve the system. And you could get an answer. Where the, you know, the answer is 2, negative 5, you know, whatever. You could get no solution. You could get infinitely many solutions. Okay, so I'm going to tell you at least one of them is no solution, one is infinitely many, and one has a solution. Okay, and then you'll do the last three or uh, problems or so. Use the slope and the y-intercepts of the graphs to determine one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. 